This video is about the Korg Electribe 2 and how to sequence the synthesizers on here. Now before we start, I do want to mention this doesn't really have a very good step sequencer built into it. So we're just going to go over how to enter it in live. Press keyboard here, and if you actually hold it down, you can change uh, where that blue light is. What that blue light means is it's being able to select from parts 1 through 16. We can assign anything to these parts, whether it be drums or synthesizer parts. So what I'm going to do is press shift and then the fourth pad in on the top here. That allows us to change the scale. Right now it's in chromatic. You might not be able to see it due to the light, uh, but if I change this, it's going to be on chromatic. That's the scale that I want because what that does is it maps just a regular keyboard, black and white notes, across these pads. So once you're in there, I'm going to press exit. Okay. Now what this means is this starts at note C. You can change that in the settings, but so that's C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So the, here's an octave. So what I did is I took a paint marker and I just marked all of the pads that are the white keys just so I have reference here. So at first it might be a little strange to use like this, but once you understand the notes that you want to use, I'd say it's a whole lot better to use it this way. If you want to change the octaves, so right, right here, you just look over here. Now one, if it's, it's blue right now, what that just means we're on bar one. But the red one here indicates what octave we're in because we're in keyboard mode. It's going to show it like this. So if I press this button, 4, it's going to go up. And then you can keep going. To bring it down, you just press 1. So now you have a full keyboard you can work with. So what we want to do is go over uh, each section here and just show what each section does. Now the way you can imagine this, if we changed any of these, what this does is you would imagine it, all of these controls apply to that part. So like this one, all of these knobs apply to that part. And if you change it, it's going to change the controls for here and so on. Okay, for each part on here, um, you will want to look in the menu here and then go to part 19, which is voice assign. Okay, we're in mono mode now. Mono 1 means legato, which means if you're holding down a note and you press another note, it's not going to re-trigger any envelope. If you move it to mono 2, as you can hear, it's re-triggering every note, even if I'm holding down another note. Okay. Now we have poly 1 mode. Again, that's legato. And then poly 2. As you can hear, when you're playing the poly 2 mode, um, it's actually applying the envelope to everything. So this is paraphonic. So what I'm going to do is bring this to mono 2 because that reminds me mostly of my EMX 1, so I love that mode. You can program that to all of these parts here, and then you can save it as kind of like your template, and then you can create whatever you want. For this instrument, we're going to change the oscillator. In other words, that means we're going to change the waveform that's being played. Now you notice when you change, if you're holding down the note, you don't hear the oscillator change. So every time you change, you have to re-trigger the note in order to hear the different uh, oscillator. There are a lot of different oscillator types. Now down here we have pitch. So you can bring it up and down in a wide range. So the edit knob that we have here will actually change the sound depending on what oscillator you're using. So each one will sound different. For example, the dual oscillator here, this is dual square. You can modify the pitch 
of one of those oscillators in the voice. For unison, it'll just change the detune of the oscillators. Now, if you want to change libraries, hold down shift, turn oscillator, and we change, we have instrument. All right, so over here we have the filter, top knob here is the cutoff. So what that is, is a low pass filter right now. So it's gonna cut off the high end. So you'd imagine kind of like a curve. If we're in HPF, that's going to kind of be the same thing except coming from the low end, so it's a high pass. And then we have BPF, which is like both, and we're just moving it along this way. Now, if you want to emphasize it, you just turn up resonance. If you bring it up, it's gonna, it starts to ring because it's so high. And now, uh, what we have next is EG int, and that goes over here uh, back to the envelope generator, which is down here. And envelope generator, uh, we can apply positive or negative uh, envelope. So what you have to do is bring up the resonance here and bring the filter down and start to hear a change. So as you can hear, it's kind of running the filter through that envelope. And you can turn it this way and it's doing it the opposite direction. Now over here we have modulation. Uh, so what you do is when you turn this, you're gonna see the source on the left hand side and then the destination on the right hand side. So if you like a destination, let's say pitch, okay, right now it says EG plus pitch. If you hold down shift and turn modulation, it's gonna stay with the pitch and then it's going to change the source. So let's go to LFO triangle, which means it's going to run it through a triangle wave, okay? And it's assigning it to the pitch. So if I press a note, immediately here, uh, when I turn the depth up here, it's going to send it through harder through the pitch. The speed here is just how fast it's gonna go. Go really fast. And there are other shapes, of course. And now we have the amp EG section. This is the volume of whatever part you're on, and this is the panning. So let's choose, um, let's just choose this piano here, for example. Now what we want to do is, I kind of want it to sound more like a piano because right now it's just hitting the note and it doesn't really fade out or anything. So if I want to do something like that, I'm going to press this button. And what that does is it's called Amp Envelope Generator. So if I change the attack and the decay, I can actually make it kind of fade out. Over here, we're looking at the effects. If you want to turn the effects on, just press that button. And then you can change the effects over here by turning this. And you'll see there's a whole bunch of different effects. And each one will have different settings for this edit knob. So for example, like a delay, if you bring it up, it's going to bring up the amount of feedback. There's a lot of different effects you can switch through. So I'm going to start off with pressing trigger, and I already have a hi-hat hitting to the beats here. Okay, so I'm going to just make a quick drum beat with those, just pressing record. And now it's looping. Now we go to keyboard, hold it down press that synth because that's the synth part I want to play to. Let's go down in an octave here.
Now if you want to make a drone note, for example, uh, all you have to do is press play, press the note you want to drone, hold it down, press record, and then wait till it goes through the whole bar, and then what you do is you press record and let go of the note. You'll hear a quick pause and then it'll start droning. Now let's add another part to this, so I'm going to go keyboard and press this. Let's go up a couple octaves. Now what I want to do is make the note fade out, so I pressed amp -EG, so that brings the volume to change this. I'm just going to shorten the note. Let's press play and record. Let's add something else, so I press keyboard and go to here. Let's say we want to erase something, uh, so hold down Part Erase, and what I do is I hold it down while I press play, and that pretty much erases what we're hearing. And then I can start over pressing keyboard, and record. If I don't like it again, Part Erase, hold it down. Let's say I want this synth to glide between the next notes. Hold down shift and turn the pitch, and that's going to make it glide. The further you turn it, the longer it's going to take. So let's look over motion recording. So what I'm going to do is just record a synth here. Let's change the resonance and filter, so it's something we can definitely hear change. Uh, if I press record and press play and turn this, it's going to run through one bar and copy whatever I'm automating here. So let's press play. Now we can hear it repeat and play over. So there are shortcuts here. Uh, so if you wanted to clear that motion that we recorded, hold down shift and press the second pad in here. Make sure we're on this part because that's the part we want to clear the motion on. If you want to change and clear the motion on something else, then that's what you do. And then you press enter and it'll say okay, that means it cleared the motion, let's press play to hear it. Now let's say we want to just erase the sequence. You hold down shift and you count in three pads, press this one, and it'll say clear sequence, press enter. So press enter, it'll say OK, and as long as we're on this part, it's gone now. So if I press play, that part is now gone.